Hi guys, welcome back to the desk corner. Welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're taking a look at the Derwent Academy portrait set. Um, these are watercolor pencils. It's a 12 set of skin tones. I decided to buy this for my middle school art students after realizing that our watercolor pencil set was very basic and it was difficult to blend skin tones for our portrait project. So I decided I might as well just get a set of these and have the class kind of share them. Um, and learn a little bit about skin tones and how to blend them and after they were done with them I brought them home so they're going to be a little bit beat up as you guys will see after about a hundred kids have probably used them for small periods of time I'll probably keep this set around for them to use in the future but in the meantime maybe I'll use it a little bit myself as well and I know that a lot of you guys have asked me to test out sets like these like the Derwent Academy sets so this will be my first Derwent Academy set that I am trying out. Here is what the set looks like. I know it's tragic. A couple of these skin tones, especially um, this cream color, which just did not cooperate with the electric sharpener in the classroom. Oh dear, look, it's already halfway gone. But I still have quite a bit left with the other pencils as well. Ugh, they're kids, so they're just a bit rough around the art supplies, but this was the main watercolor pencil set that I found that was more of a student grade set, so it was only $10. It's not a big deal. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at these colors. I'm going to make a swatch chart for you guys so you can see how they look. I'm usually pretty lazy with swatch charts, but luckily there's only 12 colors in this set, so I don't have much of a problem making the small ones. It's the bigger ones that seem to get me feeling lazy. They're a little bit uneven, but you're just gonna have to bear with me. And it doesn't matter too much because there's still a big enough square for you guys to see the colors swatched out anyways. I did a lot of rearranging here because it seemed like there were certain color schemes in this set, at least according to the dip at the end, which I later learned was not accurate to all of the colors. They all needed a good sharpening after being used by my students, of course. Oh, it's so sad looking at them all uneven like this. So of course I have to go and fine line it, and that's how I messed up one of the lines here at the bottom. It was pretty unfortunate. You can't really tell with it sped up like this, but it's kind of funny looking at the bottom there. Hopefully you guys will see as I label the colors, but I could talk about them a little bit. We have white, bright pink, rose, carmine red, terracotta, brown, cream sand, those are two separate ones, yellow ochre, raw umber, burnt umber, and the last one is black. So as I swatch that bright pink color right there, you can kind of see the color scheme that I was going for in this first row. I wanted to swatch those pink colors, but that rose was definitely more of a peach color than what I expected, so it threw me off a bit. I wish I could have put it in front of the terracotta instead. The brown is pretty much what you would expect. Same with that cream. It's pretty light. You can't really see it. it doesn't show up very well on camera. And then I thought that these colors went together well. The sand, yellow ochre, raw umber into burnt umber, and then black at the end. I would rearrange some at the top if I could, because they just weren't as accurate to the color dips as I thought. So I paid those less attention as I actually did an artwork. Thank goodness I made this swatch chart or I wouldn't have known that. And then of course I have to activate it with water because these are watercolor pencils. They're a little bit patchy, I mean they are student grade pencils but they're pretty good anyways, and at least they're quite pigmented. I'm not sure what my favorite color is in this set, but I really do like the raw umber and the carmine red. So I decided I wanted to do a portrait, big surprise, because it is a portrait set, and I haven't done many portraits recently. Portraits were something I did when I first kind of got into art, and I did so many of them that I've branched out in recent years. But when I go back to it, I feel like that's what I am most skilled at, or at least what I'd had the most practice with when I was younger. And so I wanted to freehand this one, and I decided to draw a child for this artwork, and I kind of spent a while on her face trying to do all the features and just draw it out. But as you guys can see, I'm just using my watercolor block for this. Um, I wanted to do a bigger artwork this time. I've been doing a lot of the smaller ones recently. Her hair is pulled back, which does make things a little bit easier when we get to actually coloring. And then she has a braid, and I decided to include her shoulders in there too. Might as well use the set to the most of its ability. 
but since these are watercolor pencils, I wanted to make sure that I didn't just make it like a colored pencil portrait, because I tend to do that sometimes with watercolor. So I didn't want to layer too much colored pencil on top, and I wanted to make sure I actually gave it that watercolor touch, if you will. There were a lot of shadows on the one side of her face, which is why I decided to use this reference photo. Well, the reference photo I used was a younger child. I just decided to make her look a little bit older here. But I wanted to add a lot of those shadows, so I mixed some of those pink tones, especially that carmine red, with some of the browns to try and add the shadows, and this went okay. I almost wonder if the set could use less of the yellow tones and something else maybe, maybe more of beige tones because those are easier to blend with those pinks and browns. And yes, we could still use one or two yellow colors, but we do have at least four from the cream to the raw umber with a yellow tone. And I'm not sure if that was really necessary in this set to have so many. I could have even done with another type of brown, but that's okay. It's also a very pink heavy set, so a lot of the pinks really stood out in this portrait. I didn't necessarily want them to, and I could have used less pink and more yellow. But I find when doing portraits, I don't want to add too much yellow except for where I see the tones because it can quickly turn way more yellow than you want it to once you start doing that. But I added it periodically, periodically, at least the sand color. I'm not sure if I really used too much of the others. I did want to use all the colors in the artwork though, so whatever I don't use here, I'm going to use in her hair or her sweater, just to make sure that I'm using everything. And then as I blend it out, you could see that it's a little bit patchy, as watercolor pencil tends to be, but it's really nothing too crazy, and the quality is pretty good. The pigment is really nice, and this set was only about $10, so it's not extremely cheap, but it's not very expensive either. I'd have to check and see if Derwent actually offers a larger portrait set that might include more of the colors that I felt were lacking. I didn't do much research, I'll be honest. I had to do this project with my kids, and I just ordered what I could find right away. So this was kind of unexpected for me to buy this. Normally I'd look more into color ranges and things like that. See, I went a little pink heavy in some of the shadowed areas, but I go back and try and fix that or even it out a little bit neutralize it with the browns. And then I move down to her neck, and you can kind of see the gist of how I was using the cream, mixing that in with the pink and the browns. It's just hard when you go in with your water brush and you actually activate all the colors because you don't want to ruin all of that shading that you did, so you have to be very careful with watercolor pencils in general. I tried to lighten some of that shadow in which I added way too much black, and then I tried to darken and deepen the rest of the shadows, which I felt were a bit lacking. I do feel like a sepia is always really useful in any portrait set, so maybe if there's a larger version I'd have to check for that and see if it includes a sepia. I know we already have a dark or burnt umber in this set and a black, but sepia is always very useful for shadows where you don't want to use a color quite as deep as black especially with watercolor where using the black sometimes overpowers the artwork. Overall, I think I did a pretty good job with her skin. Now her hair was a little bit trickier. Oops, I guess we're moving on to the sweater first when I thought we moved on to the hair first. This is where I used some of those colors that I didn't use too much in the rest of the portrait, just so that I was using all the colors here. I made her sweater more of like a cream brownish yellow tone, if that makes sense. <laughs> you always have to be careful though in how much you add with watercolor pencil because once you activate it, it definitely intensifies everything, so you want to start off pretty light. That I've learned over time using this medium not to go heavy-handed, at least not in the first layers. I always struggle with hair, whether it's colored pencil or watercolor. And I think I just used too much black. Maybe I was too shadow heavy in the first initial layers as well. 
I did want to add some pink tones just to kind of like reflect what was in her skin tone as well. And I didn't want this to be just 100% colored pencil artwork looking. I wanted it to have a bit of a watercolor touch as well. So it didn't have to just be, well, I was about to say completely realistic. It is completely realistic. That's just how it turned out. But I was okay with having the washy look, if that makes sense. Her hair turned out all right. You could see how that black kind of um, contrasts with everything in a weird way. Maybe I used too much of it. And it kind of just looks grayish, which is an issue I have using black watercolor. Again, sepia would have been useful in this set. I'm curious whether any of you guys have tried this out before. Do you like these pencils? I did not know of their existence. I knew there was Derwent Academy watercolor, but I did not know they had a portrait set, which is actually pretty convenient. And hopefully they do have a larger set. I'll, I think I'll investigate that a little bit and maybe link it down below if I do find uh, multiple sets. But I think when I bought it, I only saw the 12 set. Now I'm adding some final touches to the artwork. And it's almost done here. Still that black just looks a little bit, I don't know. It's almost like the eye is drawn to that a little bit too much. I'm not sure if I like that. I was trying to be a bit more careful with her braid, and I think that part turned out okay. I always love adding those little strands of hair on the side too. And I'm just about finished up here. Here's my finished artwork. I'm still not sure why it's so off-center, but I guess I was too lazy to redraw it once I already realized it was leaning toward the left too much, but that's okay. I can always trim the paper down once I remove it. I'm going to leave it in the block for now to completely dry before I remove it from the block. Here again is the Derwent set that we just reviewed. These are the Derwent Academy watercolor pencil portrait set. Um, 12 set of watercolor pencils. I'll link them down below in the description box if you are interested. These are our student grade pencil and I hope that you guys found this fun, maybe useful for some of you. I will see you in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. Bye you guys!